Hello everybody and welcome to my workshop. This year round, unfortunately not from those halls in Vienna that we all learn to love so much, but from our own Hammerborg Hall. I was actually trying to film this in front of the Maya class hatch, but it's in the middle of winter and I was feeling those winter in Vienna vibes a tad too much for my liking, so we're now in the hall. What are we going to do? Well, you guessed it, we're going to do Dusak and yes, you guessed it, we are going to do Maya. More specifically, we're going to have a look at the pieces or some of the pieces that Maya presents from the God Ark. Speaking of gods, before we dive into those pieces, let's have a quick look at all the gods that Maya presents with the Dusak. Most of those would probably look familiar to many of you, but let's just go through those nonetheless, just so that we are all on the same page and everybody knows what we're talking about. First of all, get yourself into a nice slow Maya rest stance. You don't have to be quite as slow as in the long sort, but we're usually not half as slow as we think we are, so just get yourself into a nice slow stance and you'll probably be fine. Then you have to position the weapon, obviously. In this case, it's the boar. And as always in one-handed weapons, you have a hand that's free. Whatever you do with that hand, don't put it up front unless you're already wrestling. Put it on your hip or behind your back or next to your face is also something that you see on the plates. Just don't put it up front. And so here we have our first guard, the boar. Next one up is the bull. So what's the ox in the long sword is the bull in the dusak. We feel very untamed today. Next one is the one we've all been waiting for because it's just so my arrest, the wrath guard. Please know that even though we now have a like backward leaning stance, we're still facing our opponents and can obviously deliver very powerful wrath hoofs from this guard. For the next guards, let's put the other foot forward and move into the upper guard. A classic. I don't feel I need to say too much on that one. The next guard up is the straight parry from above, a very good defensive guard. And then we kind of have the same thing from below, but Maya doesn't call this the straight parry from below, he calls this the arc. So this is the guard we will be looking at later on. Then we have the change guard, another classic I would say, and we have another backwards leaning guard, the middle guard. So from here you can deliver very powerful middle hoos. So let's dive into those pieces. I'm always going to first explain the piece to you in detail as a solo drill and then we're going to have a look at how that looks with a partner in case you have a partner and to do sucks. In all the pieces in the section on the arc in Maya's book at least one of the fences is in the arc. So either you are in the arc and want to do something or your opponent is in the arc or both of you are in the arc. In the first pieces of the section you are in the arc and your opponent is attacking you with an upper strike, which is a pretty straightforward thing to do against somebody in that defensive position. In the first piece, you want to parry that upper strike and then go into an opening yourself. So afterwards, do a counter attack towards the opponent. So you're in the arc, the strike comes towards you and you go into the parry. Please keep in mind that in Dusak the strikes are usually quite hefty, so always parry with the strength of your blade and not with anything that's even close to your weak. The way we now do our counter attack from here is while we parry, so it's all happening while we're parrying, we do a cross step backwards with your left foot and then you uncross and hit your opponent from your right. So let's have a look at that again. You parry, meanwhile do the cross step with your left foot, uncross and hit your opponent from your right. Now let's have a look at that with a partner. The second variant of the first piece starts from the same situation. So you're in the arc, your opponent is attacking you with an upper strike and you parry. But we go in in a different way. Instead of doing now the cross step and kind of stepping out, we go taking this dusak back to our shoulder and go back in from our left towards the front of his face. And afterwards we hoo ourselves off with uh, middle and cross hoos. That by the way is in a lot of cases a good idea. Maya does not mention it in every piece, but he does mention it a lot. It's just a very good and safe way to make your retreat. 
Before we dive into the second piece, let's have a look at a pretty useful attack and defense. One person starts in the arc, the other person starts in the upper guard, and then you always switch between defending from the arc, attacking from the upper guard, defending from the arc, and so on. This is obviously a drill, no exchange would ever look like that, but I do think it does help you practice certain things like how to get back into the arc after a strike. The second piece now starts from the situation we just saw in that attacker defense drill and it's about seizing an advantage whenever you notice that the opponent is making a mistake. So in the second piece your opponent has just given you an upper strike and is moving back up into the arc and he's either too slow to move back up into the arc or he does move back up into the arc but not high enough. And if you notice that, you don't go in with another upper strike, but you actually choose a middle who above his dusa. In the second variant of the second piece, your opponent has once again just given you an upper strike and is moving back up into the arc. And he once again does a mistake, but in this case not by being too slow or move, not moving up high enough, but by moving up too high. Maybe because in the past you have given him quite hefty blows from above and he or she feels that he has to be, the parry has to be higher, or maybe you are a bit taller and the parry of your opponent is naturally a bit higher. And you seize that advantage that you get from his or her mistake by going in with an under who instead of an upper strike or an upper who. Let's have a look. In the third piece, Maya presents something that is very close to the concept of traveling after that a lot of you probably know from the long sword. The base situation is once again, you are in the arc and your opponent is giving you an upper strike. In this case though, he or she is close enough to actually hit you, but not too close. So the aim here is to deny your opponent that parry. The upper strike comes and you just let the upper strike go right through. To do so, you take back your weapon and also you have to take back your body because as I said beforehand, he or she is in a distance where he or she would actually hit you. So you take back your weapon and you take back your body by removing your front foot and then you go back in with an upper strike. In the next two pieces, both of you are in the arc. In the fourth piece, your opponent is the one to attack. So he or she is drawing up to give you an upper who. And you react to the sight of him or her drawing up by actually instantly giving your opponent a rather small middle who against his or her hand. Beware that there's a dusa coming and you kind of already have your weapon up front. So how am I now going to parry that? Well, you might not be able to parry the dusa, but you don't need to because you're already parrying the hand that is holding that dusa. So this attack in itself, as I see it, also contains an element of defense against the upcoming blow. In the fifth piece, again, both fences start in the arc. But in this case, your opponent does not seem to be willing to attack you. So you will have to move, otherwise we're not getting anywhere. What I really like about the fifth piece is we're finally starting with feints and stuff and deceiving and so on. And I think that's kind of when the music starts playing. So you're in the arc and your opponent does not seem to want to attack you. In the first variant of the fifth piece, we want to provoke the situation we had in the fourth piece. So we want the opponent to give us an upper strike and then go in with a middle strike. If your opponent is not attacking you, you obviously need to do something to make that happen. And what you do in the first variant of the fifth piece is you actually give your opponent a quick and nimble upper strike to the weak of his or her dusak. And I'm telling you, if you get an attack onto your weak of the weak of your dusak in the arc, it is just so tempting to react to that with an upper strike. And if that was an honest mistake on our side, you know, hitting into the weak of your opponent's dusak. An upper strike as an answer would be very successful. 
But in our case, that's what we're expecting. And once that upper who is on its way, we again go in with a middle who against the opponent's hand and then another strike towards an opening of our choice. In the second variant of the fifth piece, again, both fencers start in the arc and your opponent is not attacking you. In this variant now, you go again in with a deceit, but a quite different one. You draw back your dusak to your left shoulder and then you want to hit him with your outer flat from your right. That, as I said, is meant to be a deceit, but if your opponent is not parrying that, just pull through and hit him or her with the outer flat from your right. But most likely there's going to be a parry afterwards and then you go around with a very strong middle hoo from your left. The third variant of the fifth piece starts once again with both fences in the arc. And once again, your opponent is not immediately attacking you. What you do in the third variant is you draw back into the middle guard and then try to hit your opponent from your left over his right arm with the outer flat of your dusak. Again, if he or she is not parrying, just pull through. Otherwise, once that was parried, turn your dusak to hit towards the hat with your inner flat now. That is very likely going to be parried, but it's going to make your opponent's parry even bigger. And then you go around and hit from your right to his or her head with the short edge. That was it from my side. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. And I hope to see you all in person next year around in those halls in Vienna. Until then, stay safe, have fun and fence.